Hi, my name is Nick Roberts and I'm studying a Bachelor of Science. I also work here at the university creating video content and it's a career I want to pursue after I finish my degree. So why do I study physics? Although this is relevant because I've either been studying courses that interest me or somehow relate to video production, like astronomy and optics. This has kept me interested and motivated to finish my degree. We've had an open choice as to what topics we want to discuss and explore, but only one of them really relates to video. But we have to get there first, starting with black body radiation. A black body is a hypothetical object that perfectly absorbs all radiation that falls on it, but also is a perfect emitter of all electromagnetic radiation. This is to maintain thermal equilibrium. Importantly, the pattern of the intensity of the radiation over a range of wavelengths depends only on the body's temperature. These black body radiation curves are used as models for celestial objects like our sun. As you can see, a black body with a temperature between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin peaks in the visible light portion of the spectrum. Specifically, the sun has an effective temperature of about 5800 Kelvin, where the curve peak is in the yellow area of the visible light spectrum, corresponding to the color we view the sun as. Thankfully, we don't have to burn our retinas looking at the sun to see these effects. Hot objects here on Earth exhibit these behaviors, like heating metal and lava flows. The spectral distribution of thermal energy I've talked about before is described as Planck's law. This determines the specific spectral energy density of the emission at each wavelength and a particular temperature and looks like this. Another resulting law from black bodies is the Stefan-Boltzmann law. We use this to find the total energy that is radiated from a black body, which is proportional to the object's temperature. This of course includes the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. This law allowed Joseph Stefan to correctly determine the temperature of the surface of the sun, his being the first reasonable at calculation. Funnily enough, the law can be derived from Planck's law. This energy emitted described by the Stefan-Boltzmann law is thermal energy that we can see visually when the object reaches a certain temperature. All objects above absolute zero emit electromagnetic radiation. It's just that objects at temperatures below red hot usually emit infrared radiation. Infrared cameras, surely that's what I'm talking about when I'm trying to relate space physics to cameras? Uh, no, I realized that relationship halfway through writing this, but it's nonetheless important. Here's a sample image from a thermographic camera. This isn't actually what the sensor detects in infrared, it's actually a monochrome image with pseudo color. This helps us visually determine the temperature of the object with a spectrum of black to white, but also allows imaging where there is little visible light. Apart from this, it can be used in diagnostic situations, in firefighting, electrical engineering, and agriculture. The largest difference between thermographic cameras and optical cameras is not in the imaging science or the processing, it's actually in the lens. Because regular glass blocks long wavelength infrared, special materials must be used. Materials like sapphire and germanium are often used, and it's why thermographic cameras are usually more expensive. As the temperature of a black body increases, so does its radiated energy and the peak of the radiation curve moves to shorter wavelengths. This peak, when multiplied with the temperature, gives us a constant, which is Wayne's displacement law. This is the last major result of black body radiation, and is used to determine the temperature of distant objects like stars. It's more or less a summary of what I have already discussed, with each temperature of an object relating to the electromagnetic radiation it emits. This is where we get to the camera stuff. We know that on a nice clear day, the natural light outside will have a yellow tinge to it, just like the apparent colour of our sun. Different light sources like tungsten, fluorescent lights and even the cloudy sky will make the apparent light have a different colour from grey to blue. However, camera sensors do work differently to the human eye. Consumer and professional digital cameras need to be told what colour the light source is, otherwise the other colours will be depicted inaccurately. This specific value is called white balance. It's easy to set and ensures your photo or video has accurate colours to what you see.
You can use this color science to change the look and emotion of your final product. Lights will have a specific color temperature they output, which you can change on some lights too. Warm color temperatures can help show happy emotions and environmental warmth. And cold color temperatures can show the opposite. However, they can also be used for creative purposes. To shoot this video, I'm making sure that my camera is set to a white balance that matches my light sources because it's a presentation and I want it to look as natural as possible. So there you have it. We've all heard about black body radiation and the Stefan Boltzmann law and all that sort of stuff before, but I really enjoy looking at physics concepts and how they relate to video.